welcome to Electron Online. In the previous video, I showed you how to find the dual problem starting out with a minimization problem. We had a cost equation that we're trying to minimize. We had three of what we call constraint equations that had the larger than or equal symbol in it, which indicate this was, this was a minimization problem. So in the previous video, I showed you how to go from that into what we call the equivalent dual problem, which is now a maximization problem. We're going to solve this as if it's a maximization problem, and we're going to find the solution for x and y right here in the columns of the two slag variables. The way in which we do that is exactly the same as for maximization problem. We find the largest negative number right here in the third row, and then we come up here and we try to feel, we try to see which one we should pivot around by looking for the ratio. So 6 divided by 40, or 8 divided by 10, and 6 divided by 40 is obviously a smaller number than 8 divided by 10, so we're going to pivot around this number right here, which means we need to turn this into a 1, and we do that by taking the first row and changing it to 1 40th of the first row. Basically, divide the whole first row by 40. When we do that, we get the following result. So notice that the second and third row don't change. So I have a 10, a 15, a 15, a 0, a 1, a 0, and an 8. And over here, let me rewrite that. There's the 8. And then on the bottom row, we have a minus 2,400, a minus 2,100, a minus 1,500, a 0, a 0, a 1, and a 0. And now dividing the whole first row by 40, we get 1. 10 divided by 40 is 1 quarter. 5 divided by 40 is 1 8. We have 1 40th. We have 0, 0, and 6 divided by 40. 6 divided by 40, which is really 3 divided by 20. All right. So now we're going to take this number 1 here and use it to turn this into a 0 and to turn this into a 0, which means I'm going to take the second row and replace it by the negative of that number times the row with the 1 in it, which is row 1, and adding it to row 2. We take the third row and replacing it by the negative of that number, which is a positive 2,400, times the row with the 1 in it, and adding it to the third row. When I do that, those will become zeros. Of course, we have to also figure out what happens to all the other numbers. So let's go ahead and implement that. So we have a new matrix right here. Notice in this case, the first row doesn't change. So we get a 1, a 1 quarter, a 1 8, 1 divided by 40, 0, 0, and over here we get 3 divided by 20. And the second row, negative 10 times 1 is negative 10, added to 10, that gives me a 0. Negative 10 times 1 quarter, wow, that would be minus 2 and a half, added to 15, that is 12 and a half, 12.5. Okay, sometimes it's better to leave it in fraction format, so that would be 25 over 2. So let's just write it as 25 over 2. So again, how did we do that? Negative 10 times 1 4 is negative 10 over 4. That's minus 2 and a half. Add it to 15. That is 12 and a half. That is 25 over 2. Okay, negative 10 times 1 8. That is 10 8 added to 15. Hmm, 10 8 added to 15. Uh, let's see here. We'll do that on the side. So minus 10 over 8 added to 15. Well, 8 times 15 is 120. So this would be minus 10 plus 120 over 8, which is 110 over 8, which is 55 over 4. All right, this becomes 55 over 4. You can see that some of these get to be a little bit hairy, but just be patient and work them out slowly one at a time so that you don't make any mistakes. Mistakes are easy to be made here. Okay, next we have uh, okay, we have negative 10 times 1 40th. That would be negative 1 fourth added to 0. That would be negative 1 over 4. Negative 10 times 0, nothing changes. Zeros, nothing changes. Okay, negative 10 times 320. So 320th times a negative 10. That would be uh, negative 30 over 20, which is negative 3 over 2. And then we add that to 8. So negative 3 over 2 added to 8, so 
negative 3 over 2 plus 8, which is 6.5, which is 13 over 2. All right, so we get 13 over 2 there. Wow, those numbers are kind of a pain, aren't they? But that's how it's done. So let's go ahead and continue. Sometimes it helps to have a calculator. All right, finally we do our third row. So 2400 times this added to that gives me zero. So there'll be a zero here. Okay, 2400 times a quarter, that's 600, added to minus 2100, that would be minus 1500. All right, 2400 times 18. Wow, that would be a minus 300 added to minus 1500, that is minus 1200. Minus 1200. Okay, 2400 times 140th. Ah, 40 goes into 2400. That looks like 60 times. Six times, yep, that's 60 added to that. I get a 60. Okay, 2400 times zero, that is nothing. 2400 times zero, that is nothing. 2400 times 320th. Oh, I'm going to get a calculator now. So 2400 divided by 20 times 3, which gives me 360. All right, there we go. So there's our intermediate answer. So we have a profit of 360. We have a value for x of 60, a value for y for, of 0. Remember, this will give me the answers to x and y when we're all done. But we're not done yet because we still have two negative numbers right here. And of course, I go for the column with the largest negative number. And secondly, I need to find the smallest ratio. So here we have 3 20th divided by, divided by 1 quarter, which is equal to 3 20th times 4 over 1, which is equal to 12 20th. The ratio here is 13 over 2 divided by 25 over 2, which is equal to 13 over 2 times 2 over 25, which is equal to 13 over 25. All right, which is the smallest number? 13 over 25 or 12 over 20? Well, it looks like this is the smallest ratio, so I'm going to pivot about this number right there. Okay, so let me go ahead and erase all that. Okay, that means I want to turn this and this into zeros. So this needs to be a zero, and this needs to be a zero. So I do that by taking the first row and replacing by the negative of that number, minus a quarter, times the row with the, oh, I'm not done yet. It's not yet a one. I need to turn that into a one first. I'm jumping the gun. All right, so how do I turn this into a one? I take the second row and replace it by two over 25 times the second row. Simply multiply this times two over 25, and that will turn into a one. Of course, I have to do it for all the other numbers here. Okay, first row doesn't change. I have a 1, a 1 quarter, a 1 eighth, a 1 over 40, a 0, a 0, and a 3 over 20. The third row doesn't change, so I get a 0, a minus 1500, a minus 1200, a 60, 0, 1, and 360. So I can probably don't need to make these as long. And then finally, the second row becomes a 0, that will become a 1. So I multiply this times 2 over 25. Wow. So let's do it over here. So I have 55 over 4 times 2 over 25. So that's a 1. That's a 2. This is a 5. That's an 11. That would be 11 over 10. All right. So that's 11 over 10. 2 over 25. That's minus 2. Well, let's do it here again. So we have a minus 1 quarter times 2 over 25. That's a 1, that's a 2, that's a minus 1 over 50. So that goes in here, minus 1 over 50. This times 2 over 25 is 2 over 25. That stays as a 0. So now we have 13 over 2 times 2 over 25. The 2's cancel out, that's 13 over 25. All right. Wow. Go ahead and get rid of all that. So now I have a 1 there. And I can turn this into a 0 and turn that into a 0 as follows. I can take the first row and replace it by negative 1 quarter 
times the second row, that's the row with the one in it, and adding it to the first row. And I can take the third row, R3, and replace it by the negative of that number, which is a 1500, times the row with the one in it, which is R2, and adding it to R3. And if I do that, I get the following matrix. Now in this case, the second row doesn't change, so I get a 0, a 1, 11 over 10, a minus 1 over 50, a 2 over 25, a 0, and a 13 over 25. But I still have to work on the first row and the third row. So this will stay as a 1. Minus a quarter times this added to 1 quarter goes to 0. Okay, Minus a quarter times 11 tenths and add it to 1 8. Now, here's a little trick that I'm going to play. If, well, I'm not sure yet, if all this goes to zero and I don't have to do it again, then it doesn't really matter what those values are. But I don't know yet if that will happen, so I still have to continue. So I'm going to go ahead and use my calculator. So minus a quarter times 11 over 10. So 0.25 minus times 11 times 11 divided by 10 equals and add it to 1 8 plus the quantity 1 divided by 8 equals and end up with a minus 0 0.15. Okay, next, one, minus 1 quarter times this, that would be plus 1 over 200 added to 140. So 1 divided by 200 plus 1 divided by 40 equals, that would be 0 0.03, 0 0.03. Okay, minus a quarter times 2 over 25. So that's 2 divided by 25 divided by 4 and minus. So that would be a minus 0 0.02. And here nothing changes. And finally here, have uh, minus a quarter, which is 13 over 100. 13 divided by 100. That's minus. And adding it plus... 3 divided by 20 equals, and that becomes 0 0.02. See, at this point, calculators really do come in handy. All right, what about the third row? 1,500 times the second row added to the third row. So this stays a 0. That goes to 0. 1,500 times that. So we have 1,500 times 11 divided by 10, and adding that to minus 1,200. And that becomes a plus 450. All right, next, we have 1,500 times minus 1 50th, that would be minus 30 added to 60, that would be 30. 1,500 times that, that would be 3,000 divided by 25. 3,000 divided by 25 is 7, Oop, let me do that again. 3,000 divided by 25 is 120, all right? This stays as a 1, and... 1,500 times this, so we have 1,500 divided by 25 times 13, that's 780 added to 360, and I get 1140. And now we are done, because all these are either zero or positive. Here are the solutions for X and Y for the primal problem, the what we call the minimization problem. And finally, this here is the profit. So the profit equals 1140, which means the cost equals 1140. Because this works, if we find the solution for the profit, that would be the same solution as the cost for the initial minimization problem. We know that x is 30 and y is 120. Now let's go back to the initial problem and verify if this is indeed correct. So here we have the cost is equal to 6x plus 8y. So 6 times x, we said x was equal to 30, plus 8 times y, which is 120. And let's see if that ends up being the same value of 1140 for the cost. All right, so 6 times 30, that's equal to 180. And that would be equal to 800, that would be 960. And if we add 180 and 960 together, we get 1140, which is indeed correct. So the cost of our minimization problem, the minimum cost is 1140, which can be obtained if you let x equal 30 and y equals 120. And that is how we solve 
a minimization problem. Now, when you look at this and go, well, how did he come up with this simplex tableau? Well, if you're not sure about that, go back to the example, number eight, right before, and that's where I show you how to actually come up with the duality problem so that we can solve the, the dual maximization problem to get the solution for the primal minimization problem. And that's is how it's done.